To model with FPS Atlas, it is necessary to define the constraints that will affect harvest scheduling. In tutorial 2, harvesting was scheduled without constraints, however, in reality, there are always numerous constraints. Often constraints vary throughout a forest estate, and therefore it is necessary to define and apply a number of different constraint sets. Further, one of the real values of forest estate modeling is the opportunity to observe the consequences of various scenarios. Therefore, a variety of different constraint sets are created and applied to each area within the forest estate. This tutorial describes the basic procedures necessary to define these constraints. Let's start with creating our own first new constraint set. We do so by clicking on File and then select New. And from the list of objects that we can create, we select Constraint Set and click OK. Now an input mask opens that allows you to add all the information necessary for a new constraint set. First, of course, a description is needed for your new constraint set. And then you have a number of choices including disable harvesting. And if this is active, of course, the polygons that this constraint set would be attached to would not be harvestable. We can click green up age. Green up age is in the, defined in years and it is used to set a green up or adjacency rule in years. So for example, if the green up age is 20, no adjacent polygon will be harvested until this polygon is at least 20 years old. We have the option to click early serial. This would set up the upper age bound for the early serial stage and the maximum percentage of the area allowed in early serial. Our fourth option is minimum harvest. No harvest is allowed unless the minimum harvest that we can define in this cell here is available. And this option can be used to prevent opening up an area when only one or two polygons are available for harvest. This constraint is only applicable to zones, access units and ranges. Now on the top here, you can define serial stages. So here you set the minimum age of the serial stage and the minimum percentage of the area that must be in this serial stage. The serial stage includes everything older than the specified minimum age. Additional serial stages can be added with these two tabs over here. So in total, you have the possibility to define nine serial stage constraints. The max equivalent clear-cut area in percent sets the maximum equivalent clear-cut area in percent for an area, obviously. And you need to define equivalent clear-cut area curves and assign them to the stand groups. If no ECA curve is assigned, the default value for ECA is 100%. Block reserved sets the percentage of blocks reserved for things like wildlife trees. And at the time of harvest, this percentage will be deducted from the polygon area when calculating the volume to be removed. So first we name our new constraint set. We type no harvest in the description box on the top and then check the disable harvesting button. Now to save the changes to our new constraint set, we simply close the constraint set window and accept the changes. We can find our constraint set by clicking the toggle browser button. And you can see that a list appears here on the left in my case. It might be appearing elsewhere in your case, depending on where you put the uh, individual windows. We select the Constraint Sets tab on the bottom of this page, so we have to find it down here. We click it and we can see that our newly defined constraint set appears here on the top. Now we create a new rule set. We already know how this is done. So once again, right click into the empty area here and select New Rule Set. The input mask appears and we enter a description and abbreviation. We select OK and then copy and paste our harvest flows that we defined in the third rule set into our newly created rule set. We do so by marking all the cells that we want to copy, right click and select copy. Then we go to our new rule set and just right click in the area where we want our data to appear and select paste from the drop down menu. Like earlier, we have to set the parameters for this new rule set. We click the according button and select age from the list of harvest priorities. Now that the no harvest constraint set has been defined, 
it is necessary to apply it to a spatial unit like a clique, zone, an axis unit or a range. Our newly created constraint set can be applied to an existing zone or alternatively a new zone can be created. To create a new zone select File, choose New and from the objects to be created select Zone. We name our new zone Reserve Zone and then accept our changes by simply closing the window and click Yes. You can see that two zones have already been created. The first zone is the timber harvest land base and the second zone is the non-timber harvest land base. Accordingly, our new reserve zone will be the third zone. Now find your reserve zone in the browser window. You can find the tab Zone down here in the browser window. You click it and you can see a list of our defined zones. You double click the line with the reserve zone and the reserve zone window once again opens. To apply our new constraint set to the reserve zone, we have to add it to the list down here. We do so by marking the first row or first line of this table down here and press Ctrl plus the down arrow and the list will open that shows you our available constraint sets. We double click on No Harvest to apply this constraint set to our reserve zone. As a default, this constraint set will be applied for a duration of 999 years, which we can define in this cell to the left. We close the according window and accept our changes. It is always necessary to physically define spatial units. Once the reserve zone has been created, it is necessary to add the desired polygons to it. In the viewers legend that we get when opening a new viewer window, Expand topology view by pressing the plus beside it. Then select zone from this expanded list. You can once again also expand the zone list and you will see that currently we are displaying all the three zones that we specified within our lists. Currently our reserve zone has the same color assigned to it as zone 1. Of course, we need to change this color to be able to distinguish it from the other zone. So we click on the according square and select the color that we want to use to display our reserve zone. You can see that no polygons change their color yet. And that is because we do not yet have any polygons assigned to our reserve zone. Polygons, our basic spatial elements, can be assigned to zones by fencing operations, polygon edits, or executing SQL operations. We will now have a look how to add polygons using the fencing operation. Select the fence icon from the toolbar. The mouse pointer can now be used to digitize around polygons that you want to select in the viewer map. As long as any portion of a polygon is contained within the fence, it will be selected. Select the polygons located in the southwest portion of this map. To close the fence, right-click the mouse button. With your mouse located anywhere in the viewer, right-click and select Fence Operation. A dialog box listing the selected polygons should appear. This list can now be edited. Polygons can be added by typing in the polygon number and selecting Add Polygons. Can also be deleted from the list by highlighting the polygons and then depressing the Delete key. Edit your list so that only those polygons listed in my list as well are included in your list. From the Choose Polygon Zone Value drop-down menu, select Reserve Zone. Then click the Apply button and answer Yes. The Reserve Zone with its No Harvest constraint are now applied spatially and are visible on the map viewer. Open the viewer window by clicking the toggle browser button and in our viewer control, we can select zone and we can now see that the constraint set number one is applied to our reserve zone. If for some reason you should not see the constraint set applied to your zone yet, you can press F5 and this will refresh the window and you should see it after pressing F5. Now let's run our simulation with these new adjustments. Once again, we open our run window and press start.
and you should get the following harvest schedule. Let's have a look at the viewer again to make sure that our reserve zone is never harvested. We simply do this by dragging one of the years in our simulation run over to the viewer again. And then we can use the period buttons to cycle through the periods. And we should realize that in the southern area of our map, where we adjusted our reserve zone, the stands are getting older, but they are never harvested.